What is the meaning of life? Why are we here? What's the purpose of it? What are you doing here? How did you end up here? That's the subject we're discussing at this time on this station. And you remember yesterday we asked the question, is there any clue in the world itself as to the meaning of it all? And you remember we looked at the incredible phenomenon of the circulation of our blood and saw that 20 pounds of blood is blasted around our body every two minutes by one of the most efficient pumps that exist, our heart. And it's uh, very easy to see when you look at that phenomenon in our bodies that there is incredible order and design and purpose and meaning in the way our bodies are constructed. And actually, wherever we look in our world, we see the same truth exhibited, that everywhere there is a sense of meaning. For instance, if you look at your eye or you touch your eyelid at this moment and just take a little of your eyelid between your uh, index finger and your thumb and pull the eyelid out from your eye a little, do you notice how elastic it is? Do you notice that it's almost like a rubber blind? Do you realize that that's why you are able to see? You don't have to exert constant, deliberate thought to keep your eyelid back from your eye. You don't have to say to yourself, I must exert effort to keep my eyelid back from my eye so that I'm able to see. You don't. It's the elasticity of the eyelid that pulls it naturally back into its open position. And if it hadn't that elasticity, you would have to maintain constant contraction of a muscle in order to keep your eyelid back. Now, how does your eyelid come down over your eye? By the contraction of a muscle. And yet the surprising thing about that muscle is that it operates from the back of your eye and there is actually not enough space or room back there for a muscle to pull in a direct straight direction so that your eyelid would be pulled back and so that muscle actually is bent in other words it makes use of the lever principle in mechanics it is bent through the loop of another muscle. And actually that other muscle aids the effect of that first muscle so that they combine to efficiently pull your eyelid down over your eye when you want to wink or when you want to sleep. Now that's just the part of your body that protects your eye. When you begin to look at your eye itself, you realize that the only way that that eye operates is because it is kept constantly clean. And that is done by virtue of the fact that you actually blink and use a kind of windshield wiper on your eye thousands of times every minute. And so your eye is being constantly washed by a fluid that actually is drained through the bone of your nose and into your nose, and the waste fluid is evaporated through your nose into the air. And that all is managed simply to keep your eye clean so that you can use the incredible optical arrangements of your eye to be able to see. Do you realize, for instance, that if you look at a, a car uh, or an automobile, uh, perhaps a uh, hundred yards away from you, that huge image that you see is reduced to about one-twelfth of an inch inside your eye. And yet the image is so distinct 
that you are able to perceive it through the operation of your brain and to interpret what it is and to study every detail of it, even though it is completely reduced in size from its actual size here in the world. And then do you realize that your eye works more efficiently than the most efficient Nikon camera that exists today? that it varies its focusing ability so that it can perceive objects that are perhaps a couple of miles away and it can perceive objects that are close up to it because it can exert varying pressure on the globe of your eye so that you in fact can focus on different objects uh, at different distances. This is only part of the amazing ability that you possess in being able to see. If you just for a moment think of the way you move your head, do you realize that your head can not only move in a nodding position because it is set on the top vertebrae uh, of your spinal column, but do you realize also that you can turn your head from side to side so that you can see objects around you? And that that happens because you have a mechanism there that is very like that of a pivot or tripod on which we set our cameras, where there is... Uh, a tilt mechanism that can tilt back and forwards along with a bone with a peg in it on which your head can pivot round in different directions. But then do you realize that your vertebrae in your back not only create a lever which is flexible enough to enable you to bend from side to side even and front forwards and backwards but is also able to hold itself rigid enough so that you can stand up and then you realize also that those vertebrae provide the channel by which a vital fluid flows right down your back and then diffuses itself throughout your body in a complex nervous system. When you consider your muscular system, do you realize that you have over 500 muscles and they operate in your body simply by contraction and release? Do you see that if you look at the back of your hand, if all the muscles that operate your fingers when you bend them were set in the back of your hand, your hand would look ugly. There would be a huge muscular mass on the back of your hand. And because of that, so that your hand will look as graceful as it does, those muscles that operate those fingers are situated up in your forearm, hidden away. So in all kinds of situations in your body, at times the muscles act over each other, across each other, through each other, at times by remote control. And yet those 500 muscles operate in precise order and harmony to enable you to do thousands of things all at once. When you think of the muscles that operate your tongue so precisely, so that it can place itself exactly in a certain position and at a certain angle to form a certain word of speech, you begin to realize the great complexity and intricacy of your muscular system. When you consider the mouth itself and all the things that your mouth is able to do, you begin to realize the great complexity of the mechanical organizations of your body, that not only is your mouth able to taste, not only is it able to swallow, not only is it able to breathe, but it is also able to speak 
and to sing and to produce sounds. Your mouth is probably the most complex mechanical operation that one could ever imagine when you think of the teeth that grind and then the throat that swallows the food. In other words, wherever you look in our world, there is meaning in it. There's meaning everywhere. It's very difficult to find any part of our world where there isn't meaning and purpose. Does that give us any clue about the meaning of our lives? Let's talk about that a little more tomorrow.